Hello, it's Joe Lines, and in this video we're going to cover um, using rival expressions in escapes, um, or just think about them as a, a shortcut way to write um, things for like words, um, line returns, and whatnot, so symbols. So if if I'm in a match, and here I just have on the ignore case and multi-line, those are these two options right here, M and I. Um, that's how an auto-hotkey, you put them before the paren, right paren, and then I'm going to say I'm looking for, let's say I'm looking for a word, so um, slash w is going to match any one character, uh, but let's add a little more where I'm going to say slash w slash s, and now that's going to give me one character before a space, because the slash s is any sort of white space, slash w is one character, but let's say, let's throw in a plus here, that way it's one or more characters, um, that is before a space, and so that's how I'm grabbing those, and let's go ahead and just to be a little more specific and to show, um, in this case the very first thing I'm grabbing is one, that's the first match, and then after it it would be matching the second one, so let's let's actually add a second one in here, so I'm going to put in a second match, w plus slash s, and so it's saying look for a one character, um, and then this, the plus is saying one or more of these and as many as there are up to a space, and then another same thing with one character or more plus a space. <coughs> so here I'm getting the, um, sorry, the one first and then this, and it's going to iterate through, and since I have this space qualifier, if I had a space here, it would get lines, right, because I'm looking on both sides. Um, and in this case, I, um, I just got rid of the space, so it's not matching that. Um, so, so the W is interesting. The W S. Let's actually sh throw in. These are line breaks. So I'm going to say, um, if I put in a slash R, right, that is for a line return or a carriage return. Versus a slash N, is a new line. Uh, but the new line actually, you know, the new line really would be up up here if I'm, I'm going to do it that way, right? The the beginning of a new line. That's kind of similar to doing this, where I'm anchoring it at the beginning. <coughs> Not quite, because that very first line, if you noticed, oops, um, okay, now I, something changed here. What in the world did I change? That looks right. Oh, slash. I lost my slash. So notice this very first line, because there is no new line before it, right, it's not picking that up. Um, so I get the second two, so I want to skip the first one. There is no new line before this, it's just the very beginning of it. Um, so that's just the different ways you can play with it. Now let's say I want to take the inverse. Um, when on, on slash s, slash w, slash s um, are all ones that you can change the case, so slash w will give me the inverse. Let's get rid of this this part. So you notice here, I'm get basically telling it to get all the white space, right? Instead of saying slash w gets me the characters, but I can do the inverse by saying capital, which says don't give me that, or if I do s, that'll give me the white spaces, or a capital s, that'll give me the non-white space. Um, and then another one is b, which is boundary, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, well actually I don't want to, I'm going to do a b here, let's change this back to W. I like stating things in the positive instead of not, so it's easier for me to think it through. So, now I have said, look for um, a word with a boundary on each side of the boundary. I Actually, you know, I can't remember if the dashes qualify for a word boundary. Um, apparently, it doesn't. Um, but what you might do in that is, let's say, um, I'm trying to think of a sentence that has uh, oh, in. So let's say I'm looking for in. If I'm looking for in, and, and notice here is line, right? But if I had said my second line in, so notice this in pops up, but this one didn't. And I, I was able to do that because even though I don't have the spaces on each side, which I could have done, but it's telling me, it's telling on a hotkey to look for the boundary, make sure that there's basically a break. Let's say in 
And so that's still, so I was right, the, the dash still qualifies as a boundary. Um, so it'll find it. And that helps avoid some um, partial matches on words. Uh, I think that's really it on this video. Oh, the other one I should mention is slash T is for a tab. Um, and so if I have in here, let's let's change this back to slash W. Get rid of this guy. Now this is going to look for one or more characters with a and then a tab. And um, if I throw a tab in here, um, that should have worked. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I uh, maybe maybe this tool isn't picking up the the tabs. I'll have to play with this. Um, that should have fa oh oh there we go. I had a space tab, um, so that is the danger. You know, if you want to parse just by that, or I'm going to put the space back in here. Here, so there's a space and a tab. You can see how it's jumping around. Right now, the the way work around for that is slash s um, plus gets you the uh, any wor in word character with um, one or more white space, so the space and the tab will get qualified there, right? That's the nice thing, as, as opposed to using a tab, um, it's it's not going to pick it up without the slash. Um, I think I can manually put it on space there, but um, typically I would say something like that. That's it. These these um these are incredibly helpful. Oh, let's also um, let's say I wanted to only find words like f um, that have at least three characters. So again, I could say slash. I could do it like this, right? So that's going to be the three three characters, and and you'll notice some things with more than three characters are getting matched. That's because it matches the T H I, and then it's going to match the H I S, right? So that's why what I would want to do is put in like a space here and a space here and then it's just going to match those um, where there are just three characters right um, but I could have this is one of the things with wrong expressions there's no right answer um, it just depends what you're going to do I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to say three right that does the same thing uh, what's nice with this I can say two or three right so it's very flexible in, in building it this way and when you start having a bunch of them, when there's one or two, I typically put in the just, I'll do the things multiple times. But when you get up to like seven or ten, it gets really hard to count and, and to eyeball it, make sure you got the right thing. So basically after like three, I'll switch over to doing um, the, this type of format. And that way it, it's just easier for me to see exactly what that's working on. And these brackets are going to apply to the, the very last thing that was listed. Thank you.